Hello, friends, and welcome to another Popper League. I am Cooper the Red, and this is Black Garden. So, um, here we have this really, really cool list, and recently actually won a challenge. Um, I'm going to try and uh, say the, uh, the person's name here, Leo, Br Leo Bertuzzi. Um, you can find the list on MTG Goldfish, like I said, recently won a challenge, and um, when I was told about it, uh, I mean, there's no way I could resist playing a deck like this. Uh, definitely some different choices than um, in the uh, the decks like it that I've played before, so I'm excited to, to see how all the pieces uh, fit together. So we're going to quickly go over um, the, the cards and what I think that... Uh, they're going to be, you know, like particularly good for, and then we'll head into into the league. So we're going to start from the uh, the end here. Start from the back with Spinning Darkness. Now this is a card that uh, has seen play in these styles of decks since uh, Black Garden was first um, first being played, uh, but with the prevalence of uh, red decks, it's very, very important to be able to gain some life. So Spinning Darkness is a free spell. Um, you're able to exile uh, black cards from your graveyard instead of paying its mana cost, and then you can deal three damage to a non-black creature and gain three life. So when you're sending this at like a Monastery Swift Spirit instant speed, then you know you get to kill their creature, gain some life back, and um, that's that's pretty big. It's pretty big in those red matchups. So we definitely want some Spinning Darkness, and that's going to help um, mitigate some of the life loss from Snuff Out. Now, here's something that I haven't seen before, actually, in these lists. And uh, seeing it now, it seems really, really good. Uh, Avenging Hunter is going to allow us to steal the initiative, or rather just set it up. So once we gain control of a game and uh, we have the opponent you know, on the back foot... We're going to be able to play Avenging Hunter, which is going to accrue continuous advantage. Um, if you've been playing Pauper for any period of time, you're probably aware of how powerful the initiative is. So being able to play an initiative creature again in this style of deck uh, is definitely a cool option. And Avenging Hunter not only gives us the initiative, it's also really, really good at closing out games. Um, some of the cards we were using uh, in that role previously were uh, Vampire Sovereign and Gurmag Angler. But with uh, zero Gurmag Angler, it's going to be easier to cast our Spinning Darkness, and Avenging Hunter is going to be able to close out games much faster than uh, Vampire Sovereign or even Gurmag Angler, uh, since the opponent is going to have to watch out for our trap card. Uh, we also have one copy of Thorn of the Black Rose. Um, the Monarch has been in the proper format Far longer than the initiative has and uh, most people are aware of its strength um, being able to draw an extra card every every turn one-sided howling mine is pretty damn good so we're going to be playing one of thorn of the black rose and um you know it, it also uh has death touch so it's going to be an excellent blocker being able to take out opposing creatures one for one basically every time um, as I mentioned briefly before, we are playing Snuff Out, one of the one of the strongest removal spells currently available in Popper. Um, for four mana, we can destroy a non-black creature; it can't be regenerated. But if we control a swamp, of which we have eight, um, we're actually able to uh, instead cast it by paying four life, allowing us to take out an opposing threat. So this can be incredibly useful when we're spending all of our mana to play, for example, an Avenging Hunter. We can still throw a removal spell down to keep the initiative. Uh, we're also playing one copy of Pulse of Marasa. Um, since we have a few creatures in this list, uh, it would be nice to be able to pull them out of the graveyard. And we've got a couple ways to do that. Pulse of Marasa being one, and it's also going to be able to gain a six life at instant speed. So again, with red decks being so prevalent in the, uh, the format, gaining life is actually quite strong. Now, this is a pretty cool one. Uh, I don't think I've seen this one 
in these lists before either. Lanwar Visionary. Um, Black wishes it had a card as good as Lanwar Visionary. Um, all we have is stupid Phyrexian Rager, which is just way, way worse than this card. Um, we lose a life to draw the card. Same power and toughness. Uh, same mana cost. And then Lanwar Visionary can also tap to add a green. So a very, very strong three drop uh, creature here. So we're gonna be playing full four of those. Um, we've also uh, got Crypt Rats, one of my absolute favorite cards in Popper. Uh, three mana for a one, one, and um, we can pump black mana into it and basically sweep the board. Uh, unfortunately, we are not pairing it this time with uh, Unexpected Fangs. But still, Crypt Rats can um, either close out a game, uh, fireball style, by just dealing di damage directly to the opponent, but it can also clear a board. So if the opponent has a whole bunch of uh, one toughness, two toughness, heck, three or four toughness creatures, we can just clear the board, um, bring it back to square one, and uh, start gaining an advantage from that point. Um, we have one copy of Reckoner's Bargain and four copies of Deadly Dispute, uh, allowing us to sacrifice creatures or artifacts in order to uh, draw extra cards, and in the case of Reckoner's Bargain, gain a little bit of life. Uh, both of these cards actually work very, very well with Crypt Rats. Um, since we are able to hold priority with the Crypt Rats activation on the stack, and then sacrifice the Crypt Rats to the Deadly Dispute or Reckoner's Bargain before it actually does the damage. So before Crypt Rats kills itself, we can sacrifice it and gain some value. Um, very, very cool if you manage to pull that off, but even if you're not doing that, it, it still means that we can like uh, block um, an attacking creature with a token from Colony Garden and then uh, sacrifice it and get that value. We've got four copies of Chainer's Edict, Target player sacrifices a creature, and it has flashback, so this can potentially be a, a two-for-one if we are given enough time, and uh, if we're going to be running into Bogles or basically any deck that uh, has scary creatures, um, like, for example, uh, Demir Terror, then Chainer's Edict is going to be a great option to be getting rid of those threats. Uh, to back that up, we've got four copies of Cast Down. There's a lot of removal in this deck. So, uh, Cast Down is basically conditionless removal. It, it does say destroy target non-legendary creatures, and technically there are legendary creatures in Popper. They do exist, but you won't actually see them in practice. Um, for someone to be actually playing a legendary creature in this format, that would be a first. Um, I've been playing the format for a while and I've never seen it. Uh, we actually we actually are only running one copy of Icar Wellspring in this list. Um, I've seen generally, you know, people play a full four of Icar Wellspring, four Deadly Dispute, and three to four Reckoner's Bargain, but we're going to trust the pilot on this one. We've got room for one Icar Wellspring, and if that's all we have room for, then uh, that's all we're going to be playing as far as that goes. Uh, but uh, it is the ideal target to be hitting with a Deadly Dispute since uh, it replaces itself with that card draw, turning your Deadly Dispute into a kind of Ancestral Recall. Uh, here's another really cool one that I haven't seen played before, Fungal Infection. Uh, for a single black, we can give a creature minus one, minus one until end of turn, and we get to create a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling uh, creature token. So that's going to be um, an additional blocker, it's going to be an additional thing that we can sacrifice to Deadly Dispute and Reckoner's Bargain, and that's going to allow us to um, shrink or kill an attacking creature and block at the same time. So we're really looking to get that uh, two-for-one value with a lot of these cards. Um, we've also got two copies of Duress in the main. Um, we've got so much removal that uh, every once in a while it's going to be nice to be able to take a peek at the opponent's hand, get rid of a counter spell, get rid of um, a fog, get rid of a draw spell. Uh, there's many, 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 many targets for duress in the uh, the popper format. And uh, while generally we see this card relegated in the sideboard, uh, it's not too surprising to see it in the main here. Uh, definitely seen it in the in the main deck in several other decks like uh, Mogwarts, for instance. Um, 
finally the last spell in the main we've got two copies of blood fountain to be able to get those creatures back so for one mana we're putting two artifacts into play again this is going to be great for our deadly dispute and reckoner's bargain and then if we manage to keep that blood fountain in play until the mid to late game we can return one of our creatures maybe an avenging hunter maybe a crypt rats uh, maybe even one of each into our hand and again get that two for one value uh, as far as our lands go we've got some bolts of whispers again uh, to sacrifice to deadly dispute and reckoner's bargain we've got a lot of options uh, a lot of targets for those two cards uh, we've got eight basic swamps to go with our snuff outs we've got four of the colony gardens which are going to allow us to get that green mana for some of our spells but more importantly get that oh one plant creature token give us a blocker that we can sacrifice to our deadly disputes we've got three copies of golgari rot farm and just realizing now that i'm using the wrong art but uh i guess i can uh, restart the league i haven't actually started any matches yet and we can get the right art on that rot farm um, this is going to allow us to bounce any of the lands that have an enter the battlefield ability or we can even bounce Baron more and then cycle it. So this is uh, sort of like pseudo card advantage. Um, being able to play a land, return a land is almost like drawing a land, right? So um, just a, a really, really good option when we care about card advantage. Uh, you should be considering Karoo lands. Uh, we've got one of Crystal Grotto to give us the color of mana that we need when we need it. Uh, two copies of Bajuka Bog to uh, hinder the opponent's graveyard. We've got a lot of removal options, so opponent's graveyards should be filling up. And then finally, the one of Baron Moor, uh, allowing us to cycle it away when we have enough lands. And even, like I said before, once we've played it, we can return it to our hand with Rot Farm and then cycle it away. Uh, as far as the sideboard goes here, we've got some pretty cool stuff. We've got a single copy of Relic of Progenitus. I would have expected, to be honest, um, maybe a uh, Mill Spellbomb in that place, but we're playing the list 100% as is, so Relic Regenit as it is, and Relic is a little bit better versus Demure Terror, since we're able to tap it to continuously pull cards out of the opponent's graveyard turn after turn after turn. Uh, we've got two copies of Fangrand Marauder, excellent against Affinity decks, um, so we're going to be able to actually be gaining large amounts of life and keep our life total out of range of the uh, the affinity player uh three copies of weather the storm for those aggressive decks we've got access to green mana so with life gain being uh quite important in a couple of matchups it's really really good to have this when you have access to it uh, one of the things that i think surprised me the most about this list was the two copies of gorilla shaman we have no red sources in this list besides Crystal Grotto and Deadly Dispute. So it is going to be difficult to uh, to get this onto the battlefield. But in the Affinity matchup, this thing is a house. We're able to clean up, um, absolutely uh, annihilate their land base, as well as take out some of the, uh, the smaller artifacts and tokens. Uh, we've got two more copies of crypt rats in the sideboard if we need to go up to a full four of then we've got access to it uh, we've got two copies of wrench mind it's going to be really important to have things to take removal spells out for so if we're playing against a deck that doesn't have any creatures we want something to replace the chainer zedix the cast downs the snuff outs the spinning darknesses so, <laughs> and the fungal infections we don't quite have enough for everything but we've do got a couple of wrench mind and it is a pretty good option uh, it's no him to Turak, but it's what we got. Uh, we also got one copy of Raven's Crime, filling much the same role here. Uh, if we're up against some kind of combo or control deck, then this is going to allow us to turn our uh, excess lands into spells. And then finally, the last two copies of Duress. Again, if uh, we need to be taking the removal spells out, then this is going to give us an effective spell that uh, is going to do more than absolutely nothing and just run in our hand. Not a huge fan of this. Takes a long time to get going. We don't have any swamps for the snuff out. I think we ship this back. That's better.
Wild Bear, yes, I do. Um, five days a week, Monday to Friday, starting about 20 minutes ago. Okay, so we've got a couple choices here. We could play Swamp and hold up Cast Down. Or we could play the Rot Farm, bouncing the Colony Guard into setup for Visionary. I guess we could just play like Swamp, hold up the Cast Down, and then we still have Visionary next turn. Hey, Shauna. You know, blame and fault aren't the same two things, right? Yeah, you can blame me. Just know in your heart of hearts that it's your fault. I can resist everything but temptation. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Shauna. Glad I didn't invest. Stonks. Okay, there's a Crypt Rats, which is going to be good for that rebirth if they manage to cast it. So my understanding is that Chain Lightning is bugged, so don't try and redirect it. It'll just uh, do another 3 damage to the same target. So let's see here. If I Rot Farm the Colony Garden, I still just have access to Cast Down, which is exactly what I want. Another Swift Spear, sure. And Ren's Resolve. I don't want to always yield to uh, Swift Spear because I have um, the card Spinning Darkness. Yeah. I don't think it's the best Swift Spear art, but I think it's fine. I think it's good. Uh, we do it now. I'm going to preserve my life total. We'll uh, probably rat when they have Koldotha. I think that is this art. Oh, really? It's the other? Oh, it's the full art one. Hmm. I'll have to check that out. Oh, yeah. Playing the land was the wrong thing to do. they could have uh, played the Great Furnace and then Rebirth. Now the Rebirth looks like it's going to be, uh, yeah, Rebirth is out. Playing the Avenging Hunter is so risky. They have the Bolt. If we play Hunter, we could just lose the initiative immediately. If 
thinking I might play land, play Crypt Rats, and just hold it up. I'll take a look at that Soy Spear. Oh, that is pretty nice. Lightning Bolt going at the Crypt Rat. So let's um let's bust the Crypt Rat for three here. Again, they should have played this land first. So then they could potentially two spell and still save the Swift Spear. Oh, that was the end of my turn. Yeah, never mind. Ignore me. Oh, burning tree. Okay. Got a cast down. So one, two, three, four, five. So we can play Avenging Hunter and cast down. They are flooding out. Yeah, I agree, Irocam. I'm pretty sure they're going to have a Bushwhacker in here. There's a Rebirth. And a Galath Blast to finish off our Critter. All right, we might as well go Lost Well then, since we don't have anything to pump up. Bottom of the bog, do we want the cast down? Not the worst, but also not that great. We need something a little bit better than that. Crypt rats, um, festering, whatever. I'm gonna risk, I'm gonna gamba. We got there. Good gamble. All right, let's go to stash. Pulse of Marasa, let's go. Sweet. Win the first game versus red. We didn't even see a spinning darkness. Yeah, that's true, stream team. I uh, wasn't thinking about that, but yeah, that's absolutely accurate. We can get the treasure with the initiative for the red mana for Gorilla Shaman. Uh, so we're going to want the three Weather the Storms, 100%. I'm actually considering the Crypt Rats as well, considering how good sweepers are. I'm going to want to take out the Snuff Out. Um... Chainer's Edict, not that hot. <laughs> the 
do we want to play Fangren Marauder? I think that might be a little bit too far, but like kind of un unbeatable. Uh, well, I mean, if you're playing red, then you have access to Gorilla Shaman, which is the best card. Rid of that Ren's Resolve. They have a Bushwhacker and a Gallop Blast. True, true, that's hard to do. You do have access to um, a red white spell that says Exile Target Artifact. Oh, they had another impulse. They drew it. Okay, Spinning Darkness. Good, good, good. There you go, opponent, playing better there. Might as well block here, I think. Uh, now we get the Deadly Dispute. Wonder if they brought in Rays. Rays would be quite the blowout here. Wow. And our spinning darkness is not ready. It's gonna be some big, big damage. I could bring out Crypt Rats and get rid of everything except for the Emissary, but I don't know. It might be necessary. Yeah, because I could block the Emissary, take out the other two things, buy us a little bit of time. Thanks for the follow, friend. And here comes Galf Blast. Oh, Lightning Bolt. Yep. And we've got two black cards in the graveyard now. One more in our Spinning Darkness is ready. So we can go Chainer's Edict, Spinning Darkness. Oh, wow, this isn't big damage, though. Not dead. Wow, sacrifices the Swift Spear there. That's a bit of a surprise. We could also block Deadly Dispute.
Jolson. You say Jolson is the creator of uh, Black Garden. Oh, fantastic. Love the deck. Absolutely love it. Another Spinning Darkness, sweet. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and then we have two mana left so we can cast down and Spinning Darkness. Ooh, Rebirth. Well, we got Crypt Rats. That is a lot of stuff. I have two cards in hand. I could go to six or I could go to five. I kind of want to just keep this around so I can target it with Spinning Darkness. So I can like block here, do one damage with Crypt Rats, sweep the tokens, and still set up for basic, still set up for, uh, is that lethal? Seven plus five? Yeah, it is. Plus one from the Crypt Rats. And that's it. They play the Burning Tree Emissary and concede. There we go. That's match one in the books. Uh, we win against Mono Red 2-0. Let's go. Yeah, one land hand. We're going to mulligan that. This looks fine. What do we get rid of here? Thinking probably the Reckoner's Bargain. I don't know what Weber is playing. Weber is uh, very, very talented, so he could be playing absolutely anything.
Frostforge Bridge leads me to believe it's Affinity, but it could be Mogwarts, could be uh, Black Madness. Another Rot Farm. Kind of want to play the Vault of Whispers here so we still have access to the Fungal Infection. And again, like they're not going to be... The Draw Sports Brewers are probably not going to be playing anything for Fungal Infection this turn. Nothing for Snuff Out. I think, yeah, I think it's safe to just get this Rot Farm on board. And we can replay the Swamp next turn to have access to our spells. Yeah, this looks like Affinity. Cabal Coffers. Oh, yeah! Oh yeah, that deck is sweet. Yeah, I played that quite a while ago. Really, really fun. Eight Field of Ruin? Oh my god. Uh, what's the other one called? Tectonic something or other. Demolition field. Okay. And with the Chainer's Edict, and we'll drop the Vault of Whispers here so we have access to uh, two removal spells. The math! What's up? What's good? Alright, so no 4 4 this turn. Fair enough. Ugh, really not finding much traction here. That's a good trick, Shauna. Yeah, I've heard a little bit about Flesh and Blood. Um, the Professor has been talking about it, right? Oh, I'm glad you've been enjoying it. I uh, personally, I decided a, a while back that um, I wasn't going to spend any more any more money on another trading card game um, after I'd uh, invested in a couple of card games and they just fizzled out within a year. But I'm um, glad to hear that uh, Flesh and Blood is uh, doing well and that people are playing and enjoying it. Avenging Hunter. Oh, need to find... I guess I got the Chainer's Edict. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, next turn I can Chainer's Edict and get rid of that land.
Fortunately, my slow play uh, and intro haven't taken me too far behind on the clock here. Okay, they're going to deadly dispute, sacrificing uh, some kind of token. There's a mirror enforcer. We're going to have to snuff that out. Oh, damn it. Another creature. I wanted to get rid of that land. On Bajuka Bog. So, yeah, we are way behind on this one now. I guess I should have just attacked. I don't think it's going to end up mattering, but uh, that would have been the better play to attack there, get the two damage in. We don't have anything else to do with it. So yeah, now they get to use the Blood Fountain, get two creatures back. What do you get? Gear Seeker? No, nope, no, nope, they go for the free creatures. They're just going to slam two free creatures onto the board. So we can double block the Mirror Enforcer and then Chainer's Edict, the land. But opponent has four, going up to five cards in hand. So they got plenty of gas. Y'all blast my face. You got it. All right, so we're definitely going to want to bring in Gorilla Shaman. Thinking we probably take out the Spinning Darkness. Doesn't seem like it has too much value in this matchup. Crypt Rats, pretty so-so. Fungal Infection out. Yeah, we can bring in the Relic. Definitely bring in the Fangren Marauder. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So we do have to bring two cards back in. 
but yeah, Spinning Darkness really is not that impressive here. Crypt Rats is okay. Fungal Infection is okay. We could bring in Weather. Huge fan of that idea. I think I would rather just have the two Crypt Rats as a way to uh, get rid of everything except for the indestructible lands, and then we can Chainer Zedic those. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be a hard match. Winnable, but difficult. You like the Spinning Darkness? I mean, it hits so few things. It hits uh, Frogmite, and it hits the uh, Kenku, and that's it. Yeah, that's true too. Now we got Colony Garden, we got Deadly Dispute. I'm gonna draw some cards. Rot Farm rebuys the Garden, giving us another creature to Deadly Dispute. Weber is taking a mulligan here. Ooh, wow, down to five so far. But Affinity does draw a lot of cards. So they can uh, dig themselves out of that mulligan without too much, too much effort. This is uh, definitely a moment where I wish we played the Glamour. Just to Glamour this land, set him back. That would be amazing. Well, now I kind of want to play the Visionary rather than bounce the Garden. I could play the Visionary and bounce the Garden by using the Treasure. But then we don't have the Red Mana. I guess we still have the Deadly Dispute here to get the Red Mana later. We're also at eight cards, so if I bounce the Colony Garden, we have to discard a hand size. Shit, I should have thought of that sooner. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We can play the, the Blood Fountain, it's totally fine. Counting, it's like math.
I could I could tap the visionary to play the hunter, but then I'm leaving myself open to Galv Blast and lose initiative. I think I'll just play the Rot Farm, hold up Deadly Dispute on uh, Blood Token. Okay. So they sacrifice their own frog mite. Battle our cubs, hello. And there's the thought cast. So that's basically undoing their mulligan now. They've drawn four cards. Gorilla Shaman, let's go. And Pulse of Marasa to bring it back. Amazing. Weren't expecting that, were ya? Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I was thinking. It also lets me attack. All right, expecting the removal spell for the Gorilla Shaman. No, no blast here. And we do also have the mana for Flashback Chainer's Edict available. Oh, wow. Play Vault of Whispers, immediately sacrifice it to Reckoner's Bargain. The play lines that Gorilla Shaman forces. Here's a Spell Bomb. Costs us three mana to destroy that if we want to. I think our uh, mana would be better spent playing Avenging Hunter. And we draw Bajuka Bog. Amazing. If we attack with Visionary, then we don't have one mana left over for Shaman. I would kind of like to just keep one mana available so that they uh, feel like under the gun with the Shaman playing their lands and stuff.
Okay, now we are a little bit behind on time, but we're even on games now. I don't like this one. It's so awkward. And then Weber is starting with seven cards in hand. It's very, very slow. We don't have access to snuff out. We got a mulligan that. And this one's way worse. And this one's way worse again. Oh my god. We gotta keep this, I guess. Um, what can you do, right? Well, turnaround is fair play. Uh, our opponent mulliganed heavily game two, so we're mulliganing heavily here. Kind of wish I had that first hand back at this point. Maybe we can make something out of this. We got Gorilla Shaman. If we can stick that, maybe we can do something. Tap land? No. Ooh, 4-4 four, four in turn three. Fan Mirror Enforcer! Kind of thinking I'm just going to go cast down the Mirror Enforcer and then get rid of it with Bajuka Bog. Okay, Gear Seeker. Another star. They have one card left in hand. Snuff out. No luck. Raven's Crime comes in if we want to take out our removal spells. Reckoner's Bargain. Okay, we'll play the Bolt of Whispers so that we can Reckoner's Bargain the Icker Wellspring. And with them tapped out, we want to do it right now, actually, so they don't have an opportunity to counter it. We haven't seen any counter spells out of them yet, but it's possible that they play them. Would have been nice if that was a Deadly Dispute so we could get our red mana. Also, no swamps. So even if we draw a, uh, a snuff out, we can't use it. I guess we could cast it. We could. We have four mana. We could hard cast it. Oh man, they just drew three, four cards. What? Three cards. Or if you include the card for turn. And then another card from Chromatic Star. They had one card in hand on our turn. It's their turn now. They have seven cards in hand. If you like drawing cards, Affinity is one hell of a deck. So let's see here. We have Chainer's Edict. 
than maybe the garden. Or we bounce Bajuka Bog again. Cody, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Really appreciate the support. Thank you, and uh, enjoy those emotes. I made them myself. Well, thanks for the follow, friend. I was kind of hoping they weren't going to be able to just bring that back and then immediately replay it. Do not have the resources to replay Chainer's Edict yet. Oh, there's a cast down, so we can still get rid of it. We can get rid of it, play the Visionary, and then play the Bajuka Bog. Not bad. Oh, we got a snuff out. If only we had a swamp. Okay, starting to come back here. We're making it a game at least. It went from, you know, like just being uh, a trouncing, a complete stomping, to maybe we have a chance. He's starting to believe. Yeah, I mean, it's got a good curve, it has very powerful cards. The colors are usually pretty easy, except for red. Red is pretty hard to come by. Funny that we have no swamps, though. If we get swamp, we could even play through a uh, Kenku. Makeshift munitions. Oh, shit. That's a really good one. And we don't actually have a way to deal with that, unfortunately. Oh, there's the deadly dispute, finally. So they sacrifice the Acre Wellspring to hit me for damage. They're not even bothering with my tokens or my creatures, no. Damage directly to face, they know what they're about. Galv Blast, Galv Blast, Makeshift Munitions, win the game. Now they only have one red source currently. Oh, that's a pretty good one for them. Avenging Hunter, okay. I kind of want to just play the Gorilla Shaman and machine gun those lands. Get three artifacts off the board. And if I don't attack with Visionary, I can also play Avenging Hunter.
Shit. <laughs> Blue Elemental Blast. Okay. Wow. They brought in Blue Elemental Blast against us for the Shaman. Incredible. All right, so we'll attack and then play Avenging Hunter. Should have maybe played Avenging Hunter first in case they have the uh, Metalcraft counter spell. Yeah, this is a punt. Yeah, that is a punt. It's not always right to attack first. And once again, seeing this makeshift munitions, again, I'm wishing I was playing to Glamour. But that Gorilla Shaman was so good in uh, the previous game that, you know, I guess it all evens out. Having the initiative might have been enough to uh, to win this game, though. What a swamp. No colony garden. Then they uh, use the makeshift munitions to throw Mirror Enforcer at our face. Yep. 15. I'll play the Colony Garden, and I'm going to leave the Visionary Mana up so that I can Deadly Dispute here rather than attack. It does, of course, forecast that... Uh, we are looking to either a deadly dispute or um, cast down. Yeah, blast out of face. Go to 11, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So another Galv Blast and we're dead. Okay, we're dead. I guess uh, maybe if I draw Spinning Darkness. Oh, wow, another Gal Blast. Give him the GG in chat. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to play again sometime soon. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Okay, we're playing against a Tron deck. And they're going to have turn 3 Tron. And we're going to have a bad time. Send him a message.
take zero damage. All right. Seven mana on turn three. Totally fair and balanced. Oh, plays the Crystal Grotto instead to get that colored mana. Hey, Yusu, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Thank you for the support. And enjoy those emotes. I made them myself. Another Spinning Darkness. Those kind of feel like dead cards. Set up our, or try to set up our, uh, Oh, thank you for saying so. I love being back. It's been too long for sure. Yeah, try and set up our turn four uh, Avenging Hunter here. Mole Drifter, okay. Well, we cannot play an Avenging Hunter while that's on the board. And we don't really have access to Spinning Darkness at the moment. So I'm thinking Chainer's Edict to get that off the board. Um, and then maybe Bajookabog, it out of the graveyard. And then attack for two. Says Bazaar with the Prime sub, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for choosing to uh, give your Prime sub to me. I appreciate that. I enjoy those emotes. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we mulliganed to four in game three, and we still made a game of it. But uh, I made a mistake at the uh, towards the end of the game, and Weber was able to capitalize and finish us off. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I like I was saying, I hate uh, I hate watching magic streams and the ad comes in during the game. It, it just like I find it personally annoying. So if I can do something to prevent that, it seems like uh, a small thing. Maybe it's the same player. Maybe they play StarCraft and Magic the Gathering. I do enjoy watching a little bit of StarCraft 2 from time to time. Uh, I don't really play it, um, but I do think it's really fun to watch. Okay, so they have no creatures down right now, so I feel pretty comfortable with playing the Avenging Hunter. Um, I could just play the Swamp and then still attack in for two, get a little bit of damage in while we're at it. Because I can't, I can't hold up Reckoner's Bargain no matter, what I, no matter what I do. So the choice is I could play Avenging Hunter with the Visionary Mana um, and play the Peru, or I could attack. I'll get a little bit of damage in. They're like, make five mana, actual, factual, counterspell, you're Avenging Hunter. It's not fair. 
we banned prophetic prism. Now they got a better one. This is definitely on my list of cards that need to be banned. But uh, nowhere near the top. It's uh, The top is one card and one card only. I'm sure you all can probably guess what it is. I was talking about it the other day, but if you've played Popper at all, it's... Uh, I think it's a pretty obvious one. I think so. Uh, what did they grab here? They grabbed Ephemerate. That is a lot of mana. Didn't robe a horror. Okay. So we should have access to the Chainer's Edict. Get rid of Spinning Darkness here. Yeah, if we, if we get to keep the Visionary, we have it. Otherwise, not so much. Yeah, it looks like they're, I mean, whatever they're bouncing here, we're no longer going to have access to Chainer's Edict. No point in using Arena, this is going to get ephemerated. Oh, that actually would have been pretty nice. Try to find a um a snuff out. Actually, snuff out wouldn't work. We would have to specifically find cast down. So this is a bit of a nightmare matchup where we don't really have the kind of speed that we're looking for. Now they have Monomic, Monomic Wall plus Ephemerate, which is giving them a loop. I guess it's not a perfect loop yet. They need another Ephemerate or um, the other thing, Ghostly Flicker. So it uh, looks like the beginning of the end here. They're just like a bigger deck than we are they make more mana they do bigger things than we do but we have the initiative for now Oh, 
really did not expect that. All right, let's trade. I guess, you know, like, Mole Drifter is where they want to be. Let's see if we can find a removal spell for that Drifter. Scry, see if we can find the removal spell. No, no, no luck. Can't find it. Tulsa Marasa. Okay. Yeah, I was looking for a cast down or a snuff out there. Heck, even another spinning darkness would have been fine. So we could keep the initiative. Maybe the skeleton can get us back the initiative here. It has menace. So they need to play another creature to block it. But they do have uh, seven cards in hand. Going up to eight here with the... Uh, the entrance of the Undercity. Fungal Infection, that doesn't do it. We could Chain or Zedic to get rid of one of their cards. Oh, they just have fog. This is going to be a tough one. Really, really tough one. Hey, Judge. Hello, hello. So I don't think we're going to get any value really out of the fungal infection. We're going to take that out and replace it with a pair of duress. See if we can steal some of their uh, their spells, like uh, ephemerate or what have you. But um, yeah, this one's going to be really difficult. I don't even want to bring in Wrench Mind because they have so many artifacts. And I feel like Fengran doesn't really matter, because once they gain control of the game, then that's basically it. It's just a matter of time before we uh, we take the, all the damage. Yeah, yeah, actually, no, you're right. Relic in, for sure. like this one. Turn one to rest, maybe we can get rid of their turn three Tron. 
Take that map, turn one. I don't know. I don't know Tempted by the Ring. I have not seen it. But uh, I can resist anything except for Temptation. God, they have two! They have two expedition maps! We could get rid of the energy refractor and take them off of colored mana. That would be interesting to see. Need time to get used to the new schedule? It took me a little while to get used to it as well, but uh, now I get to see the sun, which is nice. Oh my god, they found a power plant. We don't have any green mana. The deck isn't looking very good here in this matchup, but I wouldn't expect it to, to be honest. This is definitely not a matchup we expect to see. Garbage. So we know three of the cards in hand. Duress doesn't hit any of those, but we don't have anything else to do. So we got to hope that their last card is a card we can hit, and it isn't. Well, we'll be uh, on to the next match shortly, so hopefully we'll find something... Uh, A little more winnable. Another land, but it does not produce green mana. So once again, Cannot cast our spells. Cycle Remote Isle. Actually, yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 you're right. Snuff Out doesn't hit their uh, six mana four four. Well, I guess uh, we'll do nothing. All right, you know what, friends? Like, we are absolutely struggling here. This is not a good matchup. Let's just move on to the next one. We are not winning this. We're just throwing, throwing time into the wind here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is okay. This is fine. Let's keep it. Opponent plays Colony Garden. Fantastic. Ready for a mirror match, everybody? Uh, if this is a mirror match, then time is going to be a factor. And I can't really think of another deck that plays Colony Garden off the top of my head. Ah, oh, the Chainer's Edict. Now I can't bargain it away. Bullshit. All right, let's go for a rock farm. Oh shit, that was uh, that was another mistake. Now I gotta discard a hand size. What a dummy! You can do that on the play, but you can't do that on the draw. That 
it's uh, me making a mistake because I'm thinking about playing fast here. I think this might actually be the 100% mirror match. Ooh, Thorn of the Black Rose. Okay. You have to do damage to take the Monarch. Now we have a stop on the end step here so we can see what we draw. Another spinning darkness. I could snuff out so that we don't discard a card. I think I'll just discard a land though. Not bad. Now we have the Monarch and the Initiative. Uh, we do have access to Spinning Darkness as well, but Spinning Darkness is not going to hit very much. We could Spinning Darkness our own creature to gain a little bit of life, but that doesn't seem very good. Uh, we do have Bajookabog coming up here to get rid of two Chainer's Edicts from the opponent. and before the Blood Fountain can return the Avenging Hunter, which is nice. Uh, let's go Lost Well. Um, top, top. So that's pretty good Bajookabog, I think. Then we'll discard the hand size. Maybe I should have discarded a Spinning Darkness since we're so far away from uh, pre-casting them. Jeez, even trying to play fast, I'm still a minute behind. But opponent only has two cards in hand. So we are in a, an excellent position currently. Up to three on their, when they get to the main, main phase there. They were pausing on the upkeep. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. Dispute. Uh, 
right, so let's see here. One, two, dispute this. Two more, Chainer's Edict that. Spinning Darkness this. Attack, get the initiative back. And draw a card for turn, or an extra card for the uh, the monarch. We have uh, 36 cards in our library. They have 44, so we've drawn I think eight more cards than they have. Good place to be in the game. The Juka Bog clears our graveyard out. Is this another hunter? No, this is Blood Founding getting Hunter back. I don't have the mana to recast it. So we get to hold on to the initiative for another turn, make a 3-4-1. And continue to lose time. We've got a ton of removal available. I have Deadly Dispute if they try and kill one of our things. Huh, they decide to play Visionary and Pass. Okay. Let's just hard cast Spinning Darkness. Sure. Throne of the Dead 3! <laughs> Only one hit. It's still a 5-5. Five, five. Comes into play, draw a card. Not bad. Uh, I guess we might as well play the Crypt Rats so we don't discard a hand size. Uh, not exactly a new deck, a new-ish deck. Um, what, what would we say, chat? Uh, a little over a year. It came out before the initiative was a thing. All right, so they're going to duress. They can see our hand is amazing. Probably get rid of a cast down here. No, they just concede. Okay. All right, so we got a lot of cards to take out here. Um, uh, like, it's difficult because Snuff Out and Spinning Darkness do not hit black our black creatures the thing is our creatures are green so it's probably still fine to leave those in yeah spinning darkness is one of the big reasons to play this deck is we get to play Spinning Darkness, and our matchup against Red is decent. I think the Chainer's Edicts are, like, just okay. because they have so many tokens from the colony garden. And then also, if we're talking about versus fairies, the crypt rats, we have four crypt rats. It's difficult for them to counter crypt rats uh, with a casting cost of three. 
and it just wipes their entire board. I guess Fungal Infection is pretty good against their tokens. Eh. I think it's probably better than Mulliganing. Ooh, Relic. Oh, you're playing Jeskai Ephemerate. That's a pretty cool deck. So much value, just maximum value. All right, let's hit him with a duress, see if we can take one of their deadly disputes. And this might help us get some time back. The other uh, Relic of Progenitus, I mean. We do need to hit another land drop here. That's pretty important. Hopefully the plant token will stick around for another turn and we can deadly dispute and find a land drop. We get three draws. We got there. Do I play the Rot Farm? Return, return the Swamp? No, because then we don't have Snuff Out. Let's just play the Garden Pass. Oh, maybe I should have played the Farm, because then we get Avenging Hunter next turn with Snuff Out back up. Do we play the snuff out here just to get rid of that visionary? Five cards in hand. We played Vault of Whispers. So there's two unknown cards. we play that they get both of our removal spells if we hold it they we get to keep one they do take the snuff out and here comes an avenging hunter so now they have the initiative and they're going to keep it for a little while figure this out one two three four five so we do have access to avenging hunter if we want it alternatively we could play visionary kill their hunter no slouching you know, I'm a master sloucher been working at it for years. I do like this chair though.
All right, do they attack all or just with that? So I think we actually need to double block this so they don't do any damage to us. If they take the initiative here and then have another initiative card, they get to go through the initiative twice. So I'm going to make sure they don't do any trample damage. it is. I didn't want them to get that twice. Thorn of the Black Rose. We have access to five mana. So I could play Visionary and Cast Down. So Marasa is pretty sweet. Can get the uh, Avenging Hunter back. But we are definitely falling behind here. Very quickly. Gonna take the damage, I guess. I mean, obviously we're gonna cast down the Avenging Hunter, but I think we take the four. Another Avenging Hunter. Bad news. Find a swamp. So one, two, three, Pulse of Marasa. Then we have four mana left over. One, two, three, four, Thorn of the Black Rose. I think we probably lost this one. They're going to go to the throne room on their upkeep or whenever. I mean, I guess it's just difficult to think of any world where it matters, where they're going to the throne room next turn. With me being so far, uh, far behind on time there, I'm fine with just conceding. Let's go four Crypt Rats this time. Well, obviously we cannot keep this. One land and it's a Crystal Grotto. Oh my god. These are absolutely abysmal hands. I guess we'll keep this Ditch a Snuff out. Opponent is also on the mulligan here. Maybe we can get this wrench mine to do some work. Uh, Golgari Rock Farm, turn one. Don't do that, chat. Never play a Karoo turn one unless... I can't think of any reason why you'd want to.
Double garden to start. We have crypt rats to clean up. Do they attack to send a message? like my music to just be ambiance please no vocals thank you no nothing we can do no choice Pajuka bug yeah pass back this is gonna be a funny game if they don't have any black mana here oh my god Really? Okay. No, it helps to focus me. Uh, specifically if it's instrumental music. Um, I, I can't deal with the vocals. Well, let's do the opponent a favor here. Hit him with Wrench Mind. And uh, this way they won't need to discard a hand size on their turn. Yeah, I'm a real sweetheart. Oh, they found the land? I mean, like, if we're talking about some of my favorite bands, um, Thanko Jones, Inf Infected Mushrooms, uh, Mindless Self-Indulgence, I mean, like, Metallica is amazing, of course, Alice Cooper. But uh, generally, the music I listen to nowadays is like video game soundtracks, to be honest. The Hades soundtrack is incredible. Uh, same for the Fury soundtrack. And I love the Subnautica soundtracks. Alright, so we got five mana here, so we could slam an Avenging Hunter. Just get the initiative, Pronto. Seems pretty good. I guess they could get the initiative back here. We don't have Swamp for Snuff Out because of the treasure token. That's fine. We'll figure things out as we go here. Um, let's see what they do. Oh, they have the tap to land. Baron Moore. That's not going to do it. All right. We get to forge the Avenging Hunter and start uh, doing some damage. Actually, it's probably better to forge the plant. Because all it takes is one cast down and we lose our investment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, might as well dispute. Gonna lose it anyway. And we get a blood fountain to bring the avenging hunter back. Wonderful. What do we want to do here? Uh, I want to play the swamp so we have access to snuff out. Let's play the relic. And if we snuff out, then we have access to Spinning Darkness. And that leaves the Avenging Hunter in the graveyard. Ooh, okay, okay. What do we do in response to the Duress? I think we do nothing. 
<laughs> way behind on clock. That's hilarious. Oh, okay. Thorn of the Black Rose. That's a good one. Don't currently have any kind of answer to that, really. But we do get to keep the initiative. No cast down. Oh, wrench mind. Okay. Hey, well, thanks a lot for coming out. Uh, catch you later, friend. So if they attack with Thorn to try and take initiative, we can double block to kill the Thorn. Then we can Crypt Rats to wipe the board to hold the initiative, because initiative is better than Monarch. Chainer's Edict, unfortunate. Oh well, that gets us the second creature. If we crack the relic, we don't get our two creatures back. We have Blood Fountain here just waiting to uh, draw two. I could cast Darkness on the plant. I don't really see much value to it. We could just do that later. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, if I could hit the Thorn with Spinning Darkness, you bet I would. Alright, let's draw an extra card. Crypt Rats, and we get a Deadly Dispute. Very nice. So one, two, three, and then we have one, two, three, four, five mana. So yeah, Crypt Rats kills everything. Heck, we could even Crypt Rats for three, then Deadly Dispute the Crypt Rats. I mean, we do five with the rats. Yeah, that's true. Is it better to do five now or just four and keep the treasure for later? Because that one mana will be useful with the second rats regardless.
And we get to go to the throne room now. Maybe we find our own, uh, yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I think we sack the treasure for the, uh, the relic. Man, and they take, they take the, uh, the initiative right before we get to the throne room. What a jerk. We find Avenging Hunter. Casting that takes us to the throne room. Your move. Ah, they brought in Wrench Mind as well. Amazing. We get to forge this hunter, and I think that should be GG, unless they have snuff out. Maybe even with snuff out. There we go. Whew. That was definitely a grind. Definitely a grind. I think that we had a lot of uh, decision points there. Uh, very complicated final game. And uh, I really enjoyed that. Hope all of you did too. Uh, this hand looks good to me. Okay, Mountain. Swift Spear. So I think we're going to want to play the Bajuka Bog. So that we have the turn two cast down on Swift Spear. I, I don't know who Bob the Cat would be. Okay, we just hit Swamp. So we can go turn one to rest now. Yeah, we can get that Ren's Resolve. Probably play Flame Breather. No, they play Swift Spear. And end of festivities, get that damage in. Some big damage to start. Play the land. Is there any reason for us to wait on cast down? I guess just like information. I don't think there's any harm in waiting. Little Jackal, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate that. Adelar Cub, sorry, but uh, most people cannot post links in the chat. Um, it's not for you, it's just so that uh, bots and randoms can't uh, send viewers to any nonsense link. But if you like, you could send me that link in a whisper. I'll put my name in chat so that it's uh, easy to send me a whisper. 
actually. I might even just be able to give you a VIP. Let me see if I can do that. Okay, Adelar Cubs, um, you can go ahead and post the link now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob the cat. Very accurate. I like that. Oh, they find uh, Reckless Impulse, which they have the land to cast. Let's throw this cast down. Oh, thank you, Thymos. I did not know that. that uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Ow, appreciated big time. Uh, I'm very happy to be back as well. Snuff out. <laughs> Great. I get to pay four life to kill a Swift Spear and they have a Fire Blast ready to go. Ugh, that doesn't feel very good. Oh my god, we are so dead. That's actually nine damage. We go to two and then that kills us. We are actually literally dead. Never surrender. Yeah, opponent sees the line. You sure? I'm pretty sure they will. We take the damage, we go to one, and we don't have the uh, the removal spells to be able to kill both of their critters. All right, so what do we do here? I mean, we played against this last time, so let's do the same thing. If they aren't playing uh, Rebirth, Chainer's Edict is okay. Fungal Infection seems bad if they aren't playing Rebirth. We'll bring in Wrench Mind. I don't actually like Wrench Mind because they're going to be empty handed so fast. Uh, wrench mine on the play, you say? Okay. Yeah, without knowing if they're playing Koldotha or not, or how many copies, it's a little bit more difficult to say like what what we should be running. We can take out the blood fountains, actually. You like the blood fountain? I guess it's two artifacts for the, uh, the bargain and stuff. I kind of feel this is one of the matchups that Fungal Infection is for. If they're playing Koldotha, then it kills one of their goblins, gives us a blocker for another one. But if they aren't, 
That's not very good. I mean, we got the Crystal Grotto to make green mana. We got turn two Wrench Mind. Not super happy with his hand. Well, Devilish Greg, that's like a win-win situation. Either I win and everyone's happy, or I lose and you get points. Oh, I believe. I always believe. At the start of a game? 100%. I am realistic, though, when I understand when I have lost a game. You know, we had a real easy time we, the first time we played against one of these decks. Oh, Spinning Darkness. That's a pretty good one. We need time to be able to cast it. We've already got two of those. We don't need another one. We are in big trouble here. I guess we colony garden deadly dispute. What's Tarmogoyf doing in my pauper format? Get out. Oh, they found the land. Yeah, I definitely want that weather. Oh, wow, they're just hitting us right in the face with that. On weather the storm, let's go. Shit. We don't have the black cards for spinning darkness. Well, that was fast. And another land on top. Come on. <sighs> well, we have six mana. So we could spinning darkness. But then Lava Dart is still just lethal, right? Like they have four cards in hand. We're dead. Yeah, we got to play Elf and hope for something. Uh, 
Don't think that's going to do it, friends. I guess we could Chainer's Edict and then Spinning Darkness. So we go up to five and then they don't have any attackers. It's the best thing we can do. And then they cast Mutagenic Growth. <laughs> no, okay. Back to you, opponent. Now, if we can untap, we get to go Fen Gren and uh, Treasure Token. This puts us to one. Fucking fire blast. All right. GG. It is what it is. Ah, unfortunate. All right, friends. So this is the deck we were playing today. Uh, Black Garden, and um, while the result is not exactly what I would have hoped for, I uh, did definitely have a really good time with the deck. Uh, I personally, I really, really enjoy this style of magic deck. I get to play Crypt Rats, I get to play Swamps. Um, we have amazing removal. We get the initiative, which is sweet. And then we have uh, some really, really cool sideboard options. Um, while this isn't uh, exactly the style of deck that, uh, or sorry, the card choices I would necessarily have made myself, um, I I thought they were some really, really good ideas. Uh, Land War Visionary and Avenging Hunter, these are cards that Black wishes they had. I mean, we, uh, we lost our Black Initiative cards, but we were already splashing green in this deck anyways for the, uh, the Gardens for the Deadly Disputes. So it's not that difficult uh, for us to be casting the green spells. Although, as we did see, there were definitely some instances where we were stuck. We couldn't really do anything because we had green cards in hand and no green mana. But, you know, that might have actually come down to poor mulliganing decisions. And I have to go back and uh, double check. Um, fungal infection was also interesting, but I'm really not sure about it. Like, it seems pretty good against... Um, Koldotha red decks, it seems pretty good against, like, elves or something, I guess. Um, but I, I, I'm just not sure that it's good enough, you know? Like, we have really, really good options. We could be playing, instead of Fungal Infection, we could be playing more Reckoner's Bargains. We could be playing Vampire Sovereign. We could be playing Disfigure, which actually, or, or Deadweight, which actually kills Swift Spears. So there are a lot of options, and I'm not sure Fungal Infection is the one, but uh, I am absolutely for trying cards. Like, I want to be able to play them to make these decisions. Uh, definitely, <laughs> I, I definitely appreciate some Ben Grand Marauder in these decks, um, where we're going to be, like, sacrificing artifacts or sacrificing things to Deadly Dispute and Bargain. So, like, the potential to be able to gain that life if... We had been able to survive that one more turn and untapped, you know, we would have a 5-5 five five on the battlefield and gain 5 life. And that would have been really sweet. Um, the Gorilla Shaman was super surprising. And then, you know, like even um, sort of forced Weber to bring uh, um, a very situational card uh, from the sideboard into, um, into game 3 in Affinity. So... You know, he actually brought in uh, Blue Elemental Blast, where the only target is Gorilla Shaman, a two of in our deck. Uh, don't know how many he brought in, but, you know, like that that's a card that only has two targets out of the 60 cards in our deck. Um, yeah, really, really love playing with Crypt Rats. And uh, the Crystal Grotto was interesting to be able to help out with the Scries. Um, we have a lot of colorless costs in our deck, so it's pretty easy to get 
the one mana out of it. And then, you know, if we need that green mana or we need that red mana, it's there for us. So yeah, uh, I would absolutely recommend this deck if you are looking for a um, kind of like a, a better mono black control list. Like if uh, you've seen mono black before um, with Phyrexian Ragers and um, Grey Merchants, then maybe try shifting towards this because this is actually quite a good deck. It has play against uh, red, which classic mono black really doesn't. And yeah, it has play against a lot of the other uh, decks in the field. It draws cards. It draws so many cards between the, uh, the deadly dispute and the monarch, and then um, just incredible advantage uh, from the initiative as well. So I think that the deck is definitely better than the 2-3 that we got with it, especially considering that the original pilot uh, managed to win a challenge with it.